The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. We beseech the Almighty God, mercifully to look upon thy people, that by thy great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore, both in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The epistle is written in the ninth chapter of the epistle to the Hebrews, beginning to read at the eleventh verse. Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling and unclean, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who, through the eternal Spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the 8th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 46th verse. Glory, Glory be to thee, O Christ. Jesus said, Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. He therefore hear them out. Hear them not because they are, you are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well, that thou art a Samaritan, and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honour my father, and ye do dishonour me. And I seek not mine own glory, there is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep me saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that you hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, if a man keep my sayings, he will never taste death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honour myself, my honour is nothing. It is my father that honoureth me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And I should say, I know him not. I shall be a liar like unto you, but I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abba, Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. They then took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> In late January 1965, when I was aged 14, I was suspended from my boarding school for the rest of the term, which is about 10 weeks. The school gave my parents strict instructions for me to have no contact whatever, whatever uh, with friends. So both during that 10 week period and for the six, four weeks of the Easter holiday, I lived as a hermit. My mother imposed a very strict discipline. From nine until one each morning, I did academic work. After lunch, I went on a two hour walk. Then I could read and spend no more than an hour watching television. 
Over half a century later, I regard my suspension as one of the most valuable and formative periods of my life. I learned to teach myself from books without need of a teacher. And in the process, I discovered that the best way to learn a subject is to write about it, which of course is why universities set essays for their students. Actually, I later discovered an even better method of learning a subject, which is to teach it on the ball students soon expose any woolly thinking. I learned to enjoy silence and to be content with my own company. And I learned the joy of walking. In fact, ever since then, I felt dissatisfied in the evening if I haven't spent at least an hour uh, on a brisk walk. Above all, on those long walks, I started to learn how to reflect. Some years ago, Radio 2 ran a series of interviews with people about what makes human beings special. P.D. James said that it's the human capacity for self-reflection. All animals have the capacity for thought and feeling, but it seems only humans are able to think about how they think and feel, to think about thought. They're able, in other words, to reflect. And it was during those weeks of suspension that I began seriously to exercise this faculty. So I started to wonder, as many people do, what the purpose of my existence was. Coming from a strong atheist family, uh, I assumed that my purpose was personal happiness and pleasure. But then I read a book on my father's bookshelves uh, by Bertrand Russell, the atheist philosopher, entitled The Conquest of Happiness. Russell pointed out the paradox that pursuing happiness very rarely leads to happiness. Rather, happiness is a byproduct of leading a satisfactory life. But nowhere did Russell define what a satisfactory life, life is like. So I started to try and work out a definition on my long walks. Needless to say, I didn't succeed. But even after the suspension was over and I returned to the cacophony of school life, I continued going off on long walks and wondering about the nature of a satisfactory life. The habit of self-reflection was now ingrained. The current lockdown is my suspension writ large, very large. While some people, those working for the NHS most notably, are working harder than ever, many more of us find ourselves suddenly with time on our hands. And while Zoom and FaceTime and Skype may enable us to communicate to some degree with friends and relatives, it's no substitute for flesh and blood meeting. So we find we're living as hermits, as I was all those years ago. How about teaching yourself a new subject? You might think of getting to grips with economics to work out how to prevent the present lockdown, generating vast new debts, uh, which our children and grandchildren will have to pay off. You might get into the habit like me of going on long, lonely walks. Of course, observing the two metre guideline. Above all, you might spend more time in self-reflection. As a start, try and answer that question which Bertrand Russell stimulated me, uh, me to ask. What constitutes a satisfactory life? And if you think you already have the answer, subject that answer to the most rigorous critical examination. P.D. James in her Radio 4 talk, Radio 2 talk, I should say, described a major fruit of self-reflection which is especially important at present, self-control. If you're working at home, the fridge and the kitchen cupboards probably loom rather too large in your mind. You find yourself longing to attack that leftover slice of cheesecake or open that shiny packet of chocolate digesters. Self-reflection leads us to acknowledge honestly and fully our own unhealthy appetites and to realize that indulging those appetites is not part of a satisfactory life. This makes us more proficient at resisting them. Actually, at the risk of sounding a bit smug, I made this realization myself during my suspension. In January, 1965, I was quite podgy as I'd always been, whereas by April, I was felt. But it wasn't just self-control that won the day. My 14-year-old body was telling me in no uncertain terms that a big part of a satisfactory life was girls, and I thought by becoming thinner, I might, I might make myself a tiny bit more attractive. 
So now that I approach 70, what is my answer to Bertrand Russell's question? It is to turn self-reflection into divine reflection. Let your mind become a mirror which reflects back to God, the light of God. And becoming a mirror of God is one definition of the word prayer. A satisfactory life is a prayerful life. And if you want a tangible image of prayer, think of Christ as he approached Jerusalem. He went to Jerusalem because the light of the Father, reflecting in his mind, led him there, even though he knew he would die. Prayer enabled him to do God's will. Let our prayers enable us also to do God's will. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sat on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Father, we pray for <clears throat> peace and courage in your church as it begins to follow the way of your cross in this time of suffering and pandemic. We pray for patience and wisdom for those who lead. We mourn with those who are grieving the loss of access to church buildings, to familiar rhythms and settings of prayer and to company. And we pray for the deepening of our love for God and neighbour in our time of isolation. That we may reflect your will more deeply to a troubled world. We pray for the leaders of our nation and the world, that they may respond to this crisis wisely and sensitively. We pray for those who continue to work at this time in healthcare, law enforcement and retail for their safety and the safety of those whom they encounter and support. And we pray for those structures of deeper suffering, of ongoing state of emergency, of the risk of debt and fallout that this crisis has exposed. We pray for deep listening to those needs and the continuing revelation of your kingdom's justice. We pray for those unable to self-isolate, for those who are homeless or in flight at this time, we pray for those for whom isolation brings the threat of lack or loneliness or abuse. And we pray for those suffering from the coronavirus and rejoice with those who are beginning to recover from it, that all of these may find comfort and healing that they need. We pray for those who have died tonight and will die today, that they may be welcomed into the eternal kingdom, opened to us by your son's cross and passion. Grant well, this, O oh Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. I pray that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive be the sacrifice of thy hands, to the praise and glory of his name, to our benefit and that of all his holy church. He do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, 
and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, <clears throat> provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we ever hereafter serve and please thee in units of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy and has promised forgiveness of sins, draw then that hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, a heavenly Father. Excuse me, I think I may have got the order wrong. Almighty God, a heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy to give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there one oblation himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice to oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And an institute and his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, so merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, <clears throat> according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he gave him thanks, he break it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <coughs> Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this, as often as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me.
O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness. Mercy to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all their whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our abundant duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in unity of the Holy Ghost, we will honour and glory be unto thee now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ had commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not so worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for me, preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for me, preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> and with thy spirit. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for thou art safe to feed us, who duly receive these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food and most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and to assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs of hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merit of the precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy, with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and to all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be our honour and glory, world without end. 
Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.